Hello and welcome, I'm JD and today we're going to play Task Force Birch on uh, Pillars. Just going through all the starter fleets, um, just so that you can sort of see how they all play and everything like that. We do have a few experienced players on this team, so hopefully I don't just get um, automatically destroyed. Uh, we'll see how we go, because Task Force Birch is most about light cruiser guns and less about missiles and other defensive mechanisms that you would normally have. All right, so as a new player, it's always recommended uh, if you can run with someone else. Uh, we've got three light cruisers to deploy. They're not in a group. Uh, we've looks like we've got someone coming underneath. A couple on the side. Uh, maybe we'll come up the top and come with them. Um. So I'm just wondering if we come into point C. It looks like they've got capped. I think we'll go here and then we'll we'll just come around. Oh, they're all battleships. All right. All right, we're going to reposition. So like all good things, it's important to uh, have that communication with your team, even if you're not on voice comms. I'm not on voice comms with these guys. Um, so if you can have that um, even written conversation, it's just a little bit, it makes it a little bit easier. Use your message signals. We've got a video on that, so you can have a look there uh, about what they do and what they're for. We come pretty close here. Uh, just a quick look at our uh, guns. Uh, just a quick look at our ships. So uh, we have... Uh, 250 millimeter guns in two groups top guns and bottom guns we've each got a bullseye radar then uh, just defenders and a lot of chaff this is like 46 uh, 42 uh, chaff so it's not a huge amount and we don't have a huge amount of point defense either uh, they're all just battleships where well, they said they were beams cannons okay send traffic aye aye full burn heading there now commander so we're going to start to turn around. What can we do for you, Commander? We're on our way. The missiles will be our biggest uh, thing that can kill us here because we only have defenders. We don't. So we're very limited on uh, point defense, but we do have a lot of chaff. So hopefully, there's still a bit of a chaff meta going on. Our enemies uh, do have some torpedo Your corvettes. And they're also uh, got another corvette up here, which looks like a spyglass corvette. Boxer. I'll bring these guys down and around. I was thinking, look, we could potentially go up. But until we know where the enemy is, um, I think at this point, we're just going to make use of all the point defense um, on these enemy ships. So they've got stone walls um, and they've got chaff. They look like they have missiles. Maybe some Aurora's in there. So we're getting two. Send traffic. This is potentially an area that you may want to use. Um, this is potentially an area where you may want to use uh, formations just to be able to keep the three together. But at the moment, we're okay. We just want to get in and around underneath this. They're all just drifting forward. We don't have a lot of maneuverability here. So uh, we do need to be careful of that. Uh, looks like the enemy is trying to cap A very early. Uh, if we can get our into range. Send traffic. Send traffic. One, two, and three. Reporting. Uh, it's via HE Solution RPF. Locked in. Solution locked in. Ready. Engage the target. Target acquired. And so, as a light cruiser, our, our ideal targets are taking out uh, corvettes, frigates, and to a degree, um, we also want to take out destroyers and uh, other light cruisers. We don't want to attack anything heavy. 
So we don't want to attack battleships. We don't want to attack heavy cruisers. It's just not our game. Um, let's switch this one back to HE. Solution marked in. Standing by. Right, so there's a light cruiser up there. I think that's dead. Uh, just check for that space oil. One. All right, so it's clear fire. Using the CF button. Um, and I'm going to mark that one as killed. You can see the space oil there. Or the sm magic smoke, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just in that. Let's lock that up. Uh, the next thing we want to work out is what to be doing with the rest of our ships. I'm going to make the ruby. Probably something over there. We're going to just drift this way with the rest of our team. They're looping something around there. We don't have any vision, unfortunately. That's okay. We know that there's a Vox all over there. And what we might do is just come up above a little bit. That can't get a lock for our friends. That's okay. But we are detected. What is that? There's a range. Okay. Bring up the uh, light cruisers. Like we said, we want to be the ones who are um, able to uh, hunt all those smaller ones. So they're going to try and jam our friends and we want to protect them. Our, our range is 8,000 meters, so we can't fire yet. But once it gets a little bit closer, we'll, uh, we'll engage. Unsure what that is. Hopefully someone's got an intel center. Corvette. That's something we want to engage. So let's uh, bring up and board. We do need to get a little bit closer. We're not in RPF range, so we only have 8,000 meters. That's okay. Yeah, one thing we did as we made our formation, we made sure that we stayed outside the uh, 250 millimeter range. So even as we move around, we're going to stay outside. I think it's about 400. This one's 450 meters and this one's 313. So uh, that's pretty good. But what was our radar type on these? Front lines, I think, are on all these. So we have a very limited range, but that's not too bad. So we should be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, we should be able to uh, detect most of the larger ships pretty much at max range, but aye, aye, full burn. other than that, we may have some troubles finding the Corvettes. So if you wanted to modify Task Force Birch, I'd probably going some, be adding something like a parallax radar on one of them, um, which means you do need to drop some stuff. You could probably remove some of the chaff. You don't need that much. You know, all in good time. So it looks like we've got uh, two other light cruisers over there. The enemy is securing his own eclipse. Where's E? Okay, so E's over I the bottom. So if we get around, we may be able to engage it. Something over there.
One thing we don't want to do is get too far forward. Remember, we are trying to go with our allies, so we may uh, just go sh straight down into E. Enemies firing missiles. Uh, two light cruisers over there. And remember to come back to the tactical view. Just have a look around. Uh, the, we know that there's a range over here. We know that there's two light cruisers over there. We've only killed a Corvette, so there's something hanging around. Well, there's definitely elements of the enemy team. Now, I am just going to flip the map. Control, shift, space. So now uh, it's a lot easier to position where E is. I don't have the flip animation on because it makes me a little bit sick if I do it too often. So I'm just going to do that. Try and find where the enemy is. Flip it back because now we know where um, the range is. We know where we're going. We'll be able to engage it. Is it moving off A? Yes, but that's all right. Some of these games, is it's all about not rushing. Just taking that time to make those good decisions where you can. Eyes on target. So I'm going to give the fire order now. It targets masked by the hull, so they'll start to rotate around. And there we go. We're opening up. The locks are on. Uh, this one can fire RPF. Yeah, this one can fire RPF. Once you are using 250mm RPF, you really only want to use it against uh, maximum up to the range class. We just want to get some damage on it. It's not going to do anything crazy, but I do want to get some hits on it just so that we can slow it down. You can see its point defense is pretty low. Uh, let's switch everything to HE. Mace Torpedo's now been able to come in. Boom, there we go. And we're going to pilot our light cruisers. Now into E. We can clear fire. Spiker detected. Spiker detected, so we want to find out where that's coming from. There's something up here. Tells me it's something we should potentially hunt. Enemy jammer. We are starting to be jammed. Just looking for that source. Voxel, voxel. Remember, we're hunting light cruisers here. Lock whatever that is. Ooh, okay, torpedoes, torpedoes, and a battleship as well. But we don't want to take that engagement. That's not an engagement for us. Let's kill that off. Drop some chaff. We can help by putting a lock onto this uh, Axford out here. Warning, All right, what is that? Could be a heavy cruiser as well. Can I shoot it? Receiving. We've got it now. All right, so we're going to get oh, a computer starting to lag a little bit. There's a lot of missiles coming out. Uh, we can't fire everything, so we're going to lock that one. We've got a lock over there. We've got a lock over there. We're going to get that sprinter. We can't get that one just yet. We're going to move into E. Okay, there we go. So picking our targets. Ready. We can't get that one because it's behind a rock. We don't know what's up here. I'm not sure how our team's going. Let's have a look-see. Looks like they're doing okay. They are the targets. That everyone's trying to go for them which is okay for us coming into e looks like our battleships are now firing off so 
They're providing excellent mutual mutual defense between each other. They've got beams, they've got cannons. Um, looks like there's 250 millimeters maybe being fired from the light cruisers, but that's okay. All right, let's get into E. Let's turn around. Just check where that sprinter is. Cancel that. I think that's dead. Should definitely get that other sprinter. Aye, aye. Full burn. It's going to turn around. I think we'll try and come help those light cruisers. Well, if we move to B next, uh, we'll be able to help. Someone's got a. Uh, oh, in, yeah, we've definitely got an Intel Center. So you can see on the screen it's immobilized. It's got a condition of 34%, plus or minus a degree of error. And then it's got 2% uh, worth of PD still left. So. Here you can see, you know, its point defenses are uh, destroyed. Right, here we go. Let's start firing and lock. Um, it was number one, I think, that had... Check our ammunition loadouts. H-E, H-E. Number three that we wanted to... H-E. H-E. Okay, that's a destroyer. We can get that one in a sec. So now that we've got it, let's bring number one forward. We want to start moving off towards uh, B. In fact, let's actually come up into the middle here. So what I want to do is take out this one and then get cap C. So we need to take those two out. Let's do that first. Now we've got three locks. I've got one on 8509. We've got another one now on 9625. So just remember where they are going. I'm going to have the bottom guns fire AP. Yeah, we so punch a little bit more into them. Should be okay, but... Okay, beam ships. When we come out, we want to target those. So target that. That is a much better target for us because they are more deadly to our um, warships. So the battles... Uh, the battleships will want us to take out the destroyers first because beam weaponry will do more damage than the 250s. So let's uh, do that. Whoops. Make it a priority. Uh, tell them what I'm doing. Reporting. Receiving. Aye, aye. Proceeding. We want to come out, aye, but we don't want to get too far in. There's another destroyer, but I think it's... Um... Right, that's what we're going for. Uh, we can probably move these guys continually this way. Uh, we are within the 8,000 meters, so that's good. That voxel there should die to one of the heavy cruisers shortly. There's a destroyer up there and another damage voxel. So we're doing pretty well. We haven't been targeted. Because our friends are going for um, these other ships. Okay, Sprinter. Okay, we can't get that one, unfortunately. It's too far away. Uh, this destroyer's had its beam and torps destroyed. Oops, sorry. I'm jumping around a little bit here. So, uh, in lieu of... Yes, yes, I can. Um, Eyes on target. If your teammates ask you to do something, oop, turn my caps lock off. So, uh, sorry, caps was on. Target lock. Uh, get a lock on the voxel. <clears throat> now it's shooting into we're shooting into its engines so that is a definitely a good spot for us to be firing at 
And I think we're actually going to come up. Because the sprinters are up here. The keystones are up here. We've got three points. I don't need to go take myself out of the fight to the B. Uh, our friend's telling us that they're capping B. Excellent, so that's good. So you don't have to do everything. Remember, we're playing as a team. You know, um, wherever that sprinter is, I definitely do want to be able to take it out. What can we do for you, Commander? Uh, fire HERPF. Firing HERPF. That, to us, is also a high-priority target. Just check the voxel. Oh, okay, it's suffering. Uh, Alright, we're going for this one. I don't think that voxel's going to come back, but we'll we'll see. So, uh, fire, fire. fire. Receiving. Uh, that one to also fire. So one and two are firing there. Three's firing on the sprinter. Just get it killed. Just needs to come on board. Alright, so remember we've got three locks. So with all this, you just got to remember who's locking who. Uh, we are ahead. I do want to get rid of the um, sprinter, just because in case it comes back, but it looks like it's pretty much toast. Okay, it is. I will now switch. Number three. Alright, so now everyone can just fire directly at 8509. This one looks dead as well. Now I said it's a mixed load here. I am firing a bit of AP just for penetration. I probably don't need to, to be honest. Um, at some point, I will have a guide on on this, but on ammo, but. I uh, ammo and penetration characteristics I just haven't got there at the moment so I think we're sort of starting to wrap up here I, if I was to give you uh, my thoughts one of the things that we did was we coordinated with our team we provide the locks for our uh, larger ships and we moved to not only take objectives but we targeted uh, a very sub, uh, very select um, okay that's killed Sorry, uh, we, we targeted very select ships, so we wanted to make sure that we were targeting things that battleships um, weren't the best at. So um, we wanted the ability to take out the scouts, uh, the frigates that were pro providing E-War, and then when we saw those destroyers come on the scene and uh, we saw the uh, beams coming out, that was the largest threat to our, our friends' battleships. So we wanted to make sure that we could take them out uh, without having to uh, let them worry. Uh, they were also engaging them with their own beams and their own weapon systems, but we needed to also be there to support them. So uh, that's what we did, and it worked out. You know, we were able to uh, do a bit of assistance there. Um, we were able to do a bit of assistance there by taking them out, or at least putting some additional firepower on it, as we are able to do a fair amount of fire here. Now, we did, if we were targeted with more Iwa and more missiles, we could have had a different game. But um, if you play with your fleet, uh, to your fleet strength and to your objective, you should be able to win. Uh, we did death ball a bit there with the three battleships. It's not normally something that would occur. Um, but, you know, you've, these are sometimes the games that you have to play and you have to make those decisions based on what's occurring in the moment. So if we have a look, um, team we're on, we're on team one. Um, the battleships were taking all the damage with two, two of the... Um, Corvettes that were simply there to cap points. So that was a good build here, I think, just because, you know, something fast uh, is very important to be able to capture those points. We see here that uh, on the other team, one, two, three. So we had three um, 
Corvettes that were no doubt providing vision, providing locks, and then two light cruisers that were able to do a, a fair amount of attack um that would have been able to you know clean up scouts on the other side so they were running around capping everything battleships aren't good at maneuvering around and finding those angles of fire and if they had split up they could have been a little bit more harder to kill so um by doing that you know take and taking out those um so sorry by pro noob by pro noob taking on uh two corvettes allowed us maneuverability and then as light cruisers we took out the enemy's maneuverability uh, we didn't take a lot of damage because we weren't really targeted. Uh, in fact, yeah, we took like barely any damage. What else do we have? Uh, Babushka, again, most battleship builds usually bring at least a battleship and at least a scout or something to cap with. So, and, and then a frigate as well. So, uh, for like, I think, I assume that's electronic warfare. We didn't have a look at the other team. Uh, if we have a look at the cheese, one, two, three. If we had a look at the cheese bandit, two. To, Two destroyers uh, with beams and I think uh, torpedoes, and then uh, an early uh, Ewar frigate, Ewar frigate that we destroyed uh, fairly early on. Uh, um, the Pug Storm was loaded to the gills by the looks of it with um, torpedoes, and it did a fair amount of damage, but all in one ship. So you know it's a trade-off here. It's not there's nothing wrong with it. It's one of those ones where you have to make that trade-off. Do I take a lot of additional uh firepower or do i split my fleet fleets up you know you can, you can go anyway with the fleet builds and that's one of the, the key aspects of this game uh and i can't remember what the uh, tachyon brought to be honest uh, i'll have to go back and have a look at that uh, when i edit this all right so that's how to play task force birch i hope you enjoyed this video i'll keep trying to play through all the uh, various different starter fleets and so you can see how they play and some of my thoughts around them Alright, thanks for watching and take care.